out of the trap. All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has the only solution to getting out of the trap for so-called Negroes. Right. Has the only solution. And one of the things that the white man has done to try and make our people, well, he's done everything, you name it, he's done everything to try to make our people doubt the power of Allah being behind the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And one of the things that, well, just like uh, Pharaoh did Moses, Pharaoh was telling the people, well, Moses is so great, you know, I got all this money, I own the country, I'm rich, Moses is poor and all that, he ain't got nothing. What can he offer you? He can't do this for you like I can and all that. That still didn't stop God from being with Moses. God was with Moses and Moses was successful and Pharaoh perished. Still the same. Uh, today, the white man tries to say, well, if Muhammad was right, then how come everybody ain't with him? When, has, when in the history of the white man, as long as he's been running things, when has everybody been with the man that's right? You can't name a thing. You read all of the histories of all of the prophets that ever came, and they all were unpopular. They all had a few people with them, and a majority against them. No time since white folks have been running, and there's no, nothing right that's going to gain favor as long as white folks are in control. They said, oh, Muhammad, oh yes, he has a little sect. He has a little cult. It's okay, he's got a bigger sect than Moses had. He got a bigger cult than Jesus had. <laughs> you understand? If you say you believe in Moses and believe in Jesus, that they were from God, then here's a man that's got more followers than they had. Moses didn't even get any followers according to the Bible until he got out of here. He had a handful, I mean a real handful. They didn't even have enough followers to start naming them until they got away. Well, nobody gonna follow him until he got first got free. When the things got so tough, they had to leave, then they all jumped behind him. But as long as he was around in Egypt teaching, trying to organize them to get them ready to go, you never even hear of Moses holding any big meetings. He didn't even have enough people with him to be, to, for them to record meetings. All he did was just, he could talk to them over dinner or something. Everybody that was with him, his family. So, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, through his work, through all of his years here in America, there's left no doubt in the minds of anybody that's seeking truth that this is the man that was predicted to come. This is the last messenger from God. Daniel never had a lot of followers, according to the Bible. Daniel had a few followers. But Daniel was obviously under the protection of God and was obviously a man of God. When you read the history of Daniel and his people in slavery, you can see all the way through how God was with Daniel all the way. It didn't mean Daniel didn't suffer. It didn't mean his followers didn't suffer. It didn't mean Daniel didn't face, Daniel faced death and his followers faced death. But that didn't mean God wasn't with them because they had the confidence they had in God, the faith that they had in God, they faced death successfully and won. Faced death down, they won. The followers went in the fiery furnace and came out. Daniel was thrown in a lion's den in a den of lions that had eaten a whole lot of people before Daniel came on the scene and ate some more afterwards because the ones that threw him in got eaten up by the lion. <laughs> and the followers went into a fire and came out without even being sinned and a fire that had burned a lot of other people before and burned some afterwards because the people that threw them in the fire, the fire jumped out and burned them up. <laughs> all praises do that all up. So despite Daniel's small following, Daniel was able to forge out of a slave nation, a nation that finally got free and went back home, rebuilt the temple of Jerusalem as it was called in the book. They rebuilt the city that they had been taken from. They went free, went back to their own land, to their own people, all because of Daniel. All because Daniel would not let them become involved in the slave master's ways. His ways were different because his people were different. He never let them think they were Babylonians. He never let them accept the Babylonian name. And he had uh, Mishael and Azariah and whatever the other one's name was that they called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was a slave master's name. They never accepted those. Never did. They was Mishael, Hananiah, and Azariah, something like that. That was their real name. They kept their real name. Daniel's name was Daniel, but the slave master called him Belteshazzar. He never accepted Belteshazzar as his name because that's the slave master's name. They kept their own name. They took their name 
could be their name and not the ones that the slave master gave them. They didn't eat the food that the slave master said they ought to eat. Book says that the slave master meat, immediately the king told everybody, give everybody a portion of the king's meat. They had one particular meat he wanted everybody, all the slaves to eat. Daniel and his people wouldn't eat it. As a result, at the end of a specified time, they examined all the slaves. Daniel's people that wouldn't eat the king's meat, they were better looking than the ones who did. They were smarter than the ones that did. They were healthier than the ones that did. They had everything going for them because they didn't eat the king's meat. Well, that's why the king wanted to give them the meat. He could, so he could control them easier because that particular meat would make them dumb, would make them sick, would make them ugly. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. The honor of Elijah Muhammad today. The honor of Elijah Muhammad's teaching today is for us to restrict our diet to that which Allah has prescribed for us. This old ruler here, this old king here got a meat. And he loves the push in the black belt. And black people just lap it up and have been lapping it up for years. And the more they lap it up, the dumber they get, the sicker they get, and the uglier they get. Once the Honorable Elijah Muhammad begins to teach us, we begin to understand, we cast off that filthy of filthiest of me. You begin to notice a change. Even the eyes get a glow that they don't have before. Black people who eat pig notice that their eyes have a dullness, that there seems to be a film. And they always say about followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, their eyes seem to flash. They sparkle. They're real shiny. They're not dull. That's right. That's right. Because they're not groggy. I'll praise you to Allah. One of the first things that the, that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad does when we accept his teaching is to help us strip ourselves of the slave master's name. Because everybody that has the name of the beast shall go down with the beast. That's prophecy. Everything with that kind of man is in the Bible. We see a couple of skeptics. Pardon us, we don't like to look at you that hard. But we see a couple of skeptics. Read your Bible. Where God tells the people that he is going to destroy them. Because they put their name on his people for a curse. He says, but I will destroy you and call my servants by a new name. Right. Now, if you don't think that refers to the white man putting his name on the Negro, then you travel the whole earth and find another group of people that's wearing another man's name. Right. <laughs> right. We don't have to argue about it. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to argue about it. All we have to do is just bring you the facts. Right. You, there's, there's not one move. Don't care how minor it looks to the public. There's not one move that the messenger of Allah makes that doesn't have something to do with saving our lives. Don't tell us that there's nothing in a name. There was nothing in a name, then the white man wouldn't work so hard to make you keep his. No. Many people try to get your own name, the white man goes berserk. Well, that's not your real name. Now, what's your real name? Well, why are you concerned? If I call myself Ipsy Do, what, what difference is it? What's in a name? You say it yourself. No, oh, what's in a name as long as white folks? You can change your name from Smith to Brown, the white man don't care. You change your name from Jackson to Jones. He don't care. He doesn't feel a thing. But you get to change in your name to Sharif and Hassan, Akbar, Ali. He don't want to hear that. <laughs> Why? Because he knows that then you're accepting the honor of Elijah Muhammad. And the honor of Elijah Muhammad then is causing you to accept the name of God. But God now is calling you by his name. New name to you and me, because we've had nothing but the slave master's name. And know that these are the names that will survive into the hereafter. These are the names that will survive. 
There'll be no slave master's name in the hereafter. None. Not one. All right. So the slave master, knowing this, when he sees you, get your own name. Get a name of God. Get a holy name. Scares him to death. He said, there goes another one. About to make it into the hereafter. He doesn't want that. And he knows that brings the hereafter that much closer. And even before you get your name, when you, when you pull off his, he is scared. You pull off his, he's worried. You say X, he shakes him up. But you know, you can make it with the X. You just can't make it with his name. You, you can make it better with no name than you can make it with white folks' name. Praise you, good that. So everything that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us and the way that he makes us behave, the way that we worship, the way that we conduct ourselves, seems strange to people who first come upon us. Seems strange. It just seems strange. Suppose it seems strange. If we were traveling the same old path and doing the same old thing, we'd have the same old results. It's got to be different. Just as Daniel's people were peculiar in his time, they were different. They didn't, they didn't even worship like the other people worship. According to the book said that they had a thing where when the music played, they were supposed to worship. Daniel didn't worship to no music. He didn't need any music to worship to. God wasn't deaf. You didn't have to wake him up. God, you didn't have to party with him to make him interested in your prayer. You turned to him and prayed. And he heard your prayer. This is the way Daniel believed. This is the way the Honorable Elijah Muhammad believed. That's why you don't see us with any choirs in here. That's why you don't see an organ. The, spending enough money for an organ to be able to have a school or something. You don't see that in here. You don't have that. You don't have no quartet to jump it up and down. When we want to be entertained, we give some entertainment. We got some coming up next week and a couple of weeks after that. Give it an affair down at the embassy. We give it one here where you can be entertained. We got musicians coming in. They're going to play the music for us. Now, that, that's entertainment. Right. But when we worship, we worship. Right. We don't have to get entertainment and worship at the same time. We feel good when we worship our God. We don't need any false stimulus. Talking about, oh, I still got the Holy Ghost today. Yeah, but you got it all the choirs in their number. You could have been. <laughs> could have done that with Ray Charles. That's why he's playing the same thing he used to play in the church. And singing the same thing he used to sing when he was one of the five blind boys. Right. <laughs> was running down to see the five blind boys talking about how you, was, you, you felt so religious about going to see him. And when he got out the five blind boys and started playing rock and roll, you still went to see the same man playing the same stuff. So it, it, was, it was what he was talking that was getting to you. It wasn't what he was believing in and what he was supposed to be representing. That wasn't doing it. <laughs> you didn't have God in your mind when you went to see him at all. Right. All praises do that a lot. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, like Daniel, teaches us not to be a part of the world that's around us. We're in it, but we're not of it. This is our salvation, to be apart from that which God has slated for destruction. If you know that there's a time bomb in a building, and it's about to go off and destroy everything in the building, what excuse do you have then for wanting to be in the building? No, you want to be away from that. Well, we know, we know from our leader and teacher, teaching us, telling us to watch and see if what he says is not true, we know that the white man's world is slated for straight out destruction. We know it's doomed to fall so fast until some of us in here won't even have another birthday probably before the thing is, is settled and, you can, and, and the dumbest person the youngest person, the newest person, person that can't even speak English or something can come in the country and look at it <laughs> and see that it's gone. We know this. So then, why would we then want to be coupled or have any connection with a world that's about to explode and be destroyed? No, we don't want any part of it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad tells us what? Prepare to enter the new world. <laughs> You've got to, because the old world ain't long. A new world of happiness, freedom, justice, and equality. That's the world he's talking about. One where we won't be denied the things that we've been denied in this world. 
Daniel kept his followers he uh, healthy right in the midst of the slave master. Kept them happy right in the midst of the, or reasonably happy, as happy as they could be with all the persecution that was on them. He kept them in good spirit, right in the midst of their enemies. And then finally led them to success away from their enemies. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is preparing us to enter heaven, heaven, here on earth, while we are alive. I want to make that real plain. Because there are some people that teach heaven on earth, but they teach it to die and then you come back and you'll all live on earth together. If you're going to wind up here, why leave in the first place? <laughs> Praise be to Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the white man taught us that we had to die to get heaven and felt secure in teaching us that because he knew that once we died, none of us could come back and call him a liar. So he didn't have to worry about being contradicted. He could just keep on with his life forever. <laughs> but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad today is teaching us the truth, that there is no life after death. Death after life. That's the proper sequence. That's where you've always seen it, haven't you? You have never seen no life after death. You never have. Now you name it. But anything you've ever seen live, you've seen it die. But you've never seen anything that was dead come alive. <laughs> no. Life after death? No. Death after life. You got it backwards. This is why we've been backwards for so long. We got the whole thing backwards. This is what the white man is afraid that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is going to do. Turn us around. Why well, he used to have us singing, don't you let nobody turn you around. He wanted to keep us walking backwards forever. But we bear witness that a man is here today that's turning us around. We're thankful to our Allah that he's turning us around. Because the religion that he's teaching us is the only thing that will set us free. This is why the white man fears that just as Pharaoh feared the same thing for Moses. Pharaoh didn't fear a lot of other stuff that you might think he feared. He didn't fear that Moses was going to raise up an army or get some arms against him and all that stuff. He said in the Holy Quran in the 40th chapter that he feared, the 40th chapter and the 26th verse, he said that he feared Moses would change his slave's religion. That's the only thing he feared out of Moses. If Moses could do anything, if Moses could make them Hebrew nationalists, Israelite nationalists, make them anything he wanted to make them, if he just didn't change their religion, Pharaoh knew he still had it made. The only thing he feared was if Moses changed their religion. Because Pharaoh knew that the religion that Pharaoh had was what made them slaves. And he knew that the religion Moses had was what would free him. So if he could just, he could let them do everything else they want to do. They could just talk that. They could talk Hebrew supremacy if they wanted to. It didn't make him no difference. He helped them. They could be teaching that and could get funds from Pharaoh to keep it going, just like today. You find all these groups that are supposed to be so militant and so nationalistic and so everything, and they're getting subsidies from the government. They're operating units of, of, of black nationalists in Los Angeles, and the salaries are paid by the government. <laughs> now, you know ain't no white man going to pay you no salary to be truly black. Do you know that? <laughs> no. But he don't care what you happen to he knows you can't be black with a white guy. Can't do that. But he's not worried about it. You can be black anything, talk all kind of black. But if you stick with him, or even if you say, well, I just don't have no God, that's the same thing. That's what he gave you in the first place. There's no God at all. <laughs> so as long as you've got none, he's all right. He don't care about you. But the minute you say, I lie God, Fear strikes anyway. I don't know who he is. I don't care who he is, how big he is, how bad he is, how rich he is, how powerful he is. I don't care who he is. When a black man in America says, our lives God, it strikes fear in the heart of every white man that hears his voice. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching us a religion that guarantees, can't say promises, a religion that guarantees freedom, justice, and equality to those who accept it. And you can't beat that. That's what everybody seeks. Freedom, justice, and equality. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not teaching us phrases and slogans that we don't know the meaning of. 
He's teaching us exactly what he means when he says freedom. You and I have been hollering about, out in the streets hollering, freedom, freedom, and weren't trying to get free. Freedom to do what? To integrate with the man who's got us a slave. What kind of freedom is that? We didn't know what we were talking about. Talking about justice, justice. What is justice? Put the Negro judges on the bench. So what, so they can impress white folks and give you twice as much time? <laughs> Why of Elijah Muhammad says we want freedom? He's got it on the back of every issue of Muhammad Speaks newspaper. What the Muslims want? We want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. You know what complete freedom is? That's not letting you out of solitaire and let you walk around the Kaaba. That means out all together. No more warden, no more jailers, no more nobody looking over you, you free. Doesn't mean having a free city inside of the white man's state, controlled by the white man's state. Like these people talking about freedom city here and in Boston and Harlem is going to break away and all that, but still be under the New York state laws and all that. That ain't freedom. That's what they call just making you a trustee. <laughs> so you can do that all that. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says we want freedom, a full and complete freedom. Full, that means nothing left out. Free in every way. Complete freedom to ourselves. Our, we govern ourselves. We control our own destiny. We feed ourselves. We clothe ourselves. That's what we want. We don't want the freedom to be able to buy food from any white man's store, or to work in any white man's store, or to live in any white man's neighborhood. We want the freedom to raise and supply our own food and sell it in our own store and work in our own store and live in our own communities that we build. That we own the construction companies that build them. That we own the lumber companies that the lumber came out of. That we own the land that the trees came off of. That we own the kiln that the bricks were baked in. That's, that's freedom. Complete freedom. <laughs> okay, you do that up. We want justice. Equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or color. There again, there's only one way it can be achieved. It's not in the heart. It's not in the nature. It's not in the flesh. There's not one cell in any white man's body that can give a black man justice. That's right. The only way we can get justice is that we are the administrators of justice. Our leaders got concrete stuff here, not no spookyism, slogan that you can't explain. Just, just, just any one of these so-called Negroes running around, you tell them, we want freedom, and get them, they just had them, they interview them every day. Well, what do you actually mean by freedom? And they get to hedging and talking some talk, but if they listen to it themselves, they'd be ashamed of it. They don't know what they mean by freedom. Freedom, well, I, I just want to be uh, uh, accepted as a part of the event. That, accept it when you say accept me then. What you talking about freedom? No, you're begging. Don't be talking about freedom. <laughs> so you do that like. And the most stunning example is when we talk about equality. And you know that comes out of Negroes' mouths day in and day out, when equality. What the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says about equality. We want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. Equality of opportunity. That doesn't mean that you should have just as much opportunity to work for May Company as a white man. That's not equality of opportunity. Equality of opportunity begins at the beginning. Who owns the May Company? The reason the white folks have the opportunity that they have with the May Company is because the white man owns the May Company. And if you want equal opportunity with white folks, then that means you've got to get a black man to own something like the May Company. Then you've got equal opportunity because you've got a black job you can go to like a white man got a white job he can go to. That's equality of opportunity. And 
We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. That automatically don't mean white folks. <laughs> A lot of white people read this and they, they misunderstand. They say, well, I thought Muhammad wanted to be separated. Now he's trying to get equal with the people and get in their society. He said the best in civilized society. He didn't say he's trying to get with no dressed up savages. He didn't say that. <laughs> but Negroes aren't even trying to get equal with the white man. Let me show you. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed this out about four years ago publicly. That the Negro is not trying to get equal to the white man. He ought to quit fooling himself with those slogans and fat phrases. He's not trying to get equal to the white man. Did you know that? Did you know that when you try to force the white man to let you ride beside him on his conveyances and stuff, you're not trying to get equal to him. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said if you were trying to get equal to him, instead of trying to pick at his bus line and drag out his bus line, you'd be getting you a bus line. It was twenty dollars, and they did all that bus and they talked about all of the money that was lost by the bus line, million dollars a day or something. Well, that means that if all the black people had put their bus fare together over that year that they were walking, they could have had a bus line more fabulous than the one that they were talking about. <laughs> and one of their own. Because they had a later fight to try to get somebody hired on there or something, all that kind of stuff. You know, but all of them would be black if they had done that. They weren't trying to get equal to the white man. You can't say you're trying to get equal to the white man because you want to sit down in the restaurant and eat beside him? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says no. If you were trying to get equal with the white man, you'd be trying to get a restaurant like his, or better than his. That's what you'd be trying. That's trying to be equal with him. In other words, everything that you and I have been trying to do, talking about we're trying to be equal, we weren't trying to be equal to the white man. We were trying to share in what he had, but we weren't trying to be equal. But we went to his community, going to live next door to him. Like they're fighting right now, right here in California. Got the rumpus thing in Proposition 14, running all the way to the Supreme Court, trying to see if Negroes have the right to live next door to white folks if they want to and all that stuff. You're not trying to get equal to white folks because you want to move out of your shabby community into their nice community. That's not, you're not trying to get equal with them then. If you're trying to get equal with them, then you know, you build a community as good or better than that community. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says what the Negroes have done, instead of trying to get equal to the white man, he's been trying to get equal to the white man's dog. Everything the Negro is trying to do, the dog is doing. <laughs> Negro is trying to ride with white folks, and you can ride them down with dogs riding in the cars, buses, ride them on their planes, and everything every day. Negro is trying to sit down and eat with white folks. White folks got dogs to sit at the table and eat out of their plates with them. <laughs> Negro is trying to live next door to white folks. White folks got dogs living in the house with them. <laughs> can you see that? We haven't been trying to get equal to the man, we've been trying to get equal to the dog. And you see Negroes walking down the street, see Negroes going to get a white woman, marrying white women, she walking with a white woman. She ain't doing nothing but what the dog does. She's trying to get equal to the dog. the hard job that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has in trying to get us to want to stand on our own two feet, he has to first try to stop us from competing with dogs. <laughs> you know, we're a long way down. And it's a long, hard climb to the top. But by the help of our life and his messenger, we're going to make it. All we have to do, the black people in America, is keep on listening to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Keep on reading what he writes. Keep on reading and examining everything around you in the light of what he's saying. You can't help but make the right decision. You can't help but come to the right conclusion. You can't, because if you just, just think about it just a little bit that we talked about today. Just turn it over in your mind. It's nothing, it's, it's undeniable. It's undeniable. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has the essence of this teaching here in black and white. Whole book of it. You can sit with it for days. You can't deny anything in it. You look at some of it, it's something you never heard of before. I mean, you never heard of any of your mind before. So when you stop and think about it, you have to admit, there ain't nothing fight it. Even got white folks running around trying to bear witness to it now. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been teaching us ever since he's been teaching. That the original man is the Asiatic black man. White folks are always thought us white folks were original. And that black folks came from them because we messed up and got cursed some kind of way. Somebody and God turned them black and the rest of us been black ever since, and that's why we were cursed. We were, we were black because we were cursed, and we were cursed because we were black. 
That's, that's what they've been teaching us all this time. You got to put up with all this because you know one of your ancestors way back did something wrong and uh, you've been cursed ever since. And as long as you're black, you bear in the mark. So whatever you try to do, you try to get white. That's right. Buy all the bleach they can sell. Every bit of it. Not only that, when all you, 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 you notice how people back, I know at least a generation and two generations ago, they used to have it bad, didn't care what color their children were. They'd be trying to match them off with somebody lighter. Oh yeah, because they wanted that next generation to be lighter. And then match them off like, oh, they're trying to get something going. Because the man had convinced them that as long as you got this black skin, that's a curse on you. So we're really going to get it out some kind of way, any kind of way. Didn't make any difference. <laughs> but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad turned us around. We were walking backwards, thinking white was first. He turned us around and proved to us.